today I'm back with a new custom action figure, this time being the female Street Fighter herself, one of the most iconic women in all of video gaming, Chun-Li from Street Fighter. I'm really happy to be making um, this video because I honestly think this is one of my best female figures I've done in quite a while and I'll get into that later and it's pretty special to me because I decided to try something new with my custom action figure um, videos just kind of like um, how I explain it and how I go through the process and everything I hope it makes it a bit more entertaining and you get um, a bit more info on how I make these figures um, since that is something I want to do a lot more with these videos but yeah, today we're going to be talking about Chun-Li. She's beautiful, she's a badass fighter, and I'm pretty sure she could kick your head in until it looked like a beaten up watermelon, if we're being honest. Um, I've always wanted a Chun-Li action figure ever since um, I got into Street Fighter, like I stated in my... Um, um, Ryu action figure comparison video. I've been a big fan of Street Fighter ever since Street Fighter 4. So, um, I thought I would try my best to make a custom Chun-Li figure. And I'll explain why that is and why I didn't just go out and buy one. But, yeah. With that, let's get into the work in progress of how I made Chun-Li. So when it comes to the work in progress and just how I made this figure, even before I started, I knew that there would be a few problems that I would run into. One of those being the design I wanted. I wanted to stick with the traditional Chi Pao, I believe that's what it's called. The iconic design she's had ever since Street Fighter 2 up until now. I do know that her Street Fighter Alpha design is very well liked and there have been a lot of great custom figures based off that design, but I wanted to stick with the Chi Pao look. And a few of the design elements I thought were going to be a challenge were mostly the puffy sleeves and the hair buns but more so the puffy sleeves since they were going to be big and I felt like it would hinder articulation and I wouldn't get, be able to get the look right but I was able to pull it off and you'll see why but the second part that I was going to run into or the second problem was the thighs now we all know that she has some thunderous thighs but when it comes to most Marvel Legends, which are the pieces I wanted to use for this figure, since I did want it to scale well with Marvel Legends, um, not a lot of the female figures particularly particularly have um, thick thighs like Chun-Li. I was thinking of using the Marvel Legends Joe Casta, I believe that's how you say it, since her thighs are a bit bigger than um, other Marvel Legend female figures, but I was looking around like my fodder, um, bin and drawers, and I think I found a pretty good recipe if you want to try this out yourself. So when it came to the head, I used a, um, DC superhero girl's head. I believe it's, um, Wonder Woman. The main torso and lower body are from a Marvel Legends build a figure Mantis. The shoulders are actually from a Marvel Select Iron Man. I think it's the, it's not Bleeding Edge. I'll show a picture on the screen. The legs are actually from a WWE figure, which were used for a previous custom. And the boots are from a Marvel Legends Miss Marvel. And with that, I started to work on sculpting. And most of that sculpting did go into the legs, since again, they were supposed to be pretty big i didn't want to make them like too big and kind of have like a neca um chun -Li look where the thighs look just outright ridiculous but i also didn't want them to be too skinny and i think i found a good middle ground um most of my inspiration came from street fighter 5 chun Li, but i think it looks more like the street fighter 3 um like how street fighter 3 chun Li looked which isn't bad at all i still like how they came out and for some reason, I also wanted to try my hand at, like, sculpting muscular thighs. I'm not sure why. I guess it just came to me like, hey, I might as well emphasize how powerful her, le her legs are. And that's what I did. As you can see, here's a, a comparison with the sculpted thighs next to the original. And they're definitely a lot bigger, but I say it works fairly well. And you can also see that the um boot is also attached and i'll explain how i did that and then we get to the shoulders which again are supposed to be poofy and 
pretty much what I did for them was I cut out like small pieces of paper, like I glued a piece of paper together and cut it out and into like these pe these petal shapes, which I think are what her um, sleeves are supposed to look like. So I cut them out into like petals and glued them onto the shoulder, um, making sure not to hinder the articulation. And then I sculpted around that so I can get that poofy look once again. And as you can see, um, it came out pretty well. And the best part about it is that none of the, none of the articulation was um, exactly hindered in any way, which I'm really proud for. And then after that, it just went back to more sculpting around like her upper body, sculpting her hips and her butt, just to you know emphasize it a bit more. Again, not too big, but emphasizing it. And after that, it was mostly just sanding, making sure everything was smooth, which again, I think I did pretty well. And there were also a few other things that I worked on, such as her bracelets. Um, since I couldn't really find any bracelets that would work, I decided to make my own. And what I did was I had some earbuds, like the soft pieces that go into them, and I cut them. Um, got some black electrical tape and wrapped it around it and then I sculpted the spikes out of clay and glued them on and painted them silver and then stuck them on the figure so they are removable and I'm glad for that and then there's the um, her head <laughs> almost forgot um, I actually liked how the eyes looked it did look a bit like Chun-Li so I Decided not to really like um, change them in any way. All I was really going to do was um, paint over them to give them the right eye color. And I also paint, not painted, I also sculpted her hair while I was at it. I did run into a bit of problem as you can see since the right eye or the left eye came out looking just weird so I had to fix it. But as you can see, god damn, I, I don't mean to like pat myself on the back but this is honestly one of the most impressive paint jobs I've done for a female figure and if you're wondering why I keep saying that it's because um as that toy said it's unlike male characters who are for the most part a bit more grizzled and can still look right with some tiny specks of uneven paint females in media especially video games have flawless skin and are as attractive as can possibly be so yeah female um figures or just like female anime figures video game characters are not easy to do since the skin just has to be damn near perfect in order for it to look good and i think i was able to pull that off pretty well and again the eyes came out really well too i also did her like red eyeliner or eyeshadow i'm not a makeup artist so i don't know exactly what it's called but i did add that in since i think it was in street fighter 5 and it was a bit hard to do since i had to keep it symmetrical but i think i pulled it off pretty well then came the hair. Um, I had already sculpted the main part of it, so all I really had to, to do was sculpt, or not really sculpt, but add in the little tuft of hair that comes onto the front. And what I did for that was I had a leftover yarn weft um, from one of my other projects. So all I really did was paint it black and um, glued it onto the head and then um, give her a little bit of a haircut in order to make it look right and I also worked on her hair buns which are made out of like these little pearls that I glued onto her head thankfully they were like white so I didn't have to paint any of it and then I use bits of yarn in order to make the little um bows that go on the end and after that it was more more or less just painting and adding in like the lower part of the chi pao which I'll get into right now so you can see the completed figure and here we have the completed Chun-Li. And as you can see, there are a few things I didn't talk about in the work in progress since I did want to keep that section relatively short. So we'll be going over a few of those things here. Starting with her um, head, actually. As you can see, I added her earrings. Um, that was a that that was something I noticed with her Street Fighter V design. So I decided to add them in to my figure. All they really are are small like pearl um, pieces that I just glued onto her ears. Nothing too big. For the detail on her outfit, um, most of it is well, not most of it. 
um, the crescent moons, that's just what I'm going to call them, on her dress are painted, and the rest of it is made out of thread, such as the upper body, as you can see. And all I did was glue them on. It was kind of hard to do since of how, like, uh, how they're placed, but it wasn't too bad. And then I just painted them gold. And for her shoulders, um, this was kind of challenging since I wanted to keep that design, but I didn't really want to break up um, how it looked. So essentially what I did was, since there was enough clearance between the joint itself and where I sculpted, I glued it at the bottom and pretty much glued it around the joint. So as you can see, I can move the arm forward or out to the side, I should say, and the golden part stays in place. I'm really happy I was able to pull that off since it makes it look more like more just natural, honestly. And as you can see, the little petals on her sleeves are painted and it looks really nice in my opinion. I did add her little belt or sash. I'm not exactly sure what you would call this part. Um, technically speaking, it's not 100% done since I did want to add like the decal, like the dragon and stuff. Um, so I will probably do that later, but there have been a few instances where it's just plain white, so it still fits. For the lower part of her outfit, um, this is actually posable, as you can see. And for what I did there, um, I had this, um, I forget what it's called, but it's essentially this ribbon that has a wire um, on both ends. So all I really did was cut out a long piece of that, of that ribbon and cut out the pieces that had wire. And since they were yellow, um, it was really easy to just paint them gold. So that's what I did. I glued it on to the front and the back. As you can see, there's some of the back detail and painted it gold. So I was able to put that detail in and make it posable as you can see. And speaking of the lower part, don't get any wrong ideas. Here are her legs. Um, as you can see, I did try my best with the uh, musculature. I think I did a pretty decent job since this, this is one of the few times I've actually sculpted musculature. So I think it came out pretty decent and there is the paint. I try my best not to make anything rub and again i think i did a pretty decent job and then there's her boots these are pretty simple all i really did um was add a bit more sculpt to the bottom to make them a bit bigger and make her just a bit taller um so she could fit in with my other figures so yeah a few things that i didn't put into work in progress so i decided to talk about them here sorry about that so as i was saying accessories she has a lot of hands and most of those come from the marvel legends mcu wasp figure since she comes with both fists and like these flying hands which i used more so for martial arts hands like i explained earlier so all i really did was um paint them a flesh color and that was pretty much it she also has a pair of open spread hands which come from a marvel Legends storm and she also comes with a peace sign hand since i thought it would be cute to have um a hand that recreates one of her um, victory animations so that comes from a marvel legends gwenpool all the hands work pretty well for chun li i do know in some cases chun li has bigger hands and feet but i think for this figure they look pretty good now let's get into articulation. Her head can move up and down and it can go side to side, pretty much in a 360. Her arms can move out to the side and can go forward and back. And good thing about this is that they can go a bit in, kind of like a butterfly joint. She has a bicep swivel, single jointed, um, elbows that reach a bit more than 90 degrees and she has a elbow swivel and she also has a come on camera eh, damn it yeah you can kind of see it she has a wrist swivel and a hinge for her torso she can move she can move back a little bit forward and it can move around it does come apart kind of easily, but that's only because I wanted to make sure it was um, removable in case I needed to fix anything. Now for her legs. 
they can go forward pretty far they can't really go back unless you kind of force it so it's not too bad and they can go out to the side fairly well you can't exactly get her in a full split but it's pretty good for um her to get into into some kicking poses well which i will show off in a bit and um she can you can move her legs enough to get her into like a high kicking pose but when i was doing that for this um picture in particular the legs did get a bit loose so i don't really recommend doing it too often she also has a thigh you cannot see she also has a thigh swivel double jointed knees and a boot swivel and her ankle can go up down i said that backwards but you know what i'm saying and she does have an ankle pivot so yeah i was able to get her some pretty good articulation and she's able to pull off a lot of different poses such as her um kokosho her spinning bird kick and like i said a lot of various kicking poses i'm really happy that i was able to give her a good amount of articulation especially in the legs where it's the most important and for a bit of a comparison as you can clearly see i have her with the other capcom figures that i have that being Characters like Dante, Trish, Chris, Jury, as you can see, Phoenix over there, and Mega Man. And I say she fits in pretty well with all of them. Um, it is kind of like unknown what her height hit is, but from what people have said, she's about five feet six inches, which I think works pretty well for not only just a canon height, but for this action figure line, as you can see. And if I bring Jury a bit more forward, you can see that she is a bit taller than Jury, since Jury is around 5'4", I believe. So it works pretty well. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this figure came out. I'm happy with how it articulates. I'm happy with some of the things I was able to pull off, like the articulation and some of the design elements. Um, I'm just really, I'm just kind of proud of myself. Again, not to pat myself on the back, but I was just really surprised I was able to pull off a figure like this. Since I'm pretty sure back then this would not have come out the way um, I wanted. But over the years, I've certainly gotten better if I'm able to pull this off now. Um, I am hoping to make more um, Street Fighter figures, which I am currently working on, especially characters like Ken and Ryu. Those are going to be great. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry I haven't made a proper action figure video in a while. I've just been working on um, a few things that I'll be able to show off soon. I hope this is a great video. I hope you guys like the new type of um direction i'm going with with these videos because i am planning to do more of these in the future thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time